My name is Emil. I'm a digital strategist and I answer marketing questions. Today's question is about managing multiple businesses in a single Google Ads account. This is something that happens quite often and Lauren is in a Facebook group I'm in and this is her question. Hello, I'm fairly new to Google Ads. Welcome and I could use some feedback. The company I work for has grouped two different websites into the same Google Ads account. I believe it would be best to separate these accounts for tracking purposes and GA it could mean Google Ads or Google Analytics, although I've seen the same account run in a, under both with multiple businesses. Even if one is much smaller than the other. Do you agree? I love this question. I get to see this as a freelancer all the time. Self-manage or smaller agencies handling accounts. Uh, and, and there's just a lot wrong with this. I'm going to talk about uh, very specific actions that Google recommends, the best practices for when handling multiple businesses, how to keep your data as clean as possible when you can't uh, meet those best practices for whatever external reason. And then I'm going to jump into Google Analytics, which is uh, sometimes brought into the mix of Google Ads and sharing the same data and how to show full URL strings within Google Analytics to help you distill all that information. But first, every Sunday I send out one email that recaps all the marketing questions I answered that week. If you want to stay up to date on best practices, strategies, and become an overall stronger marketer, I think you would really enjoy this recap. It would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to the newsletter and my YouTube channel. Now, back to the answer. Lauren, I think you're 200% right, and Google has a tool called the MCC tool. It's a master account tool. And it's designed for agencies or organizations that have multiple Google Ads accounts to house them all in one. And what's nice about it is you can log in and you can see your uh, all, all of the ads that you're running at any given moment across a period. And here, it's just very simple. I'm sure you know this, maybe you don't. Um, and I recommend your agency jumps into this. Um, you can go by accounts, campaigns, ad groups, and then you could jump into them directly from the MCC without having to log into every one of the accounts that you guys are overseeing. But, and this is the huge but that always pops up, when it's not set up correctly and you don't have any control over that or, or you can't get it on that track immediately, but you still need clarity, analytical uh, insights and, and uh, actionable data, you need to be able to clean it up. So this is how I handle it. Um, the first thing is we want to talk about uh, uh, in our tools and settings is go to conversions because you're going to have two businesses in there. We want to separate the conversion data. So one business has its own conversion data. The other business has its own conversion data. And when you're looking at the, a specific campaign for an individual business, you want to separate what's relevant and what's not. And within there, you'll see uh, under you have your regular conversions you're going to set up. So I would title them for whatever the business is. So business A, purchase, business B, add to cart whatever the conversions you're tracking are and then from there you have this area called conversion action sets and in conversion action sets you could actually link several um, predefined conversions so you have add to cart, viewed product for longer than 45 seconds multiple page visits purchases whatever they are into one and then when you go to your campaign uh, you can apply for this campaign. I want these conversions to be tracked. So none of the other conversions will uh, be deployed um, as a tracking mechanism for that. So you can keep businesses separated in a single account relatively uh, cleanly that way. It's usually meant for different, um, uh, when you have different uh, conversion goals for top, middle, bottom funnel. Um, I really love this feature, but for your use case, I think this is the best way to keep your conversion data completely separate from one account to the other. And then I've run into things where when somebody's using the same Google Ads account, they sometimes use the same Google Analytics account. I don't know why this is, but I've seen this happen dozens of times. So my advice is if you're managing that or you have multiple URLs that are uh, housed under one company and using the same code, you can actually have your URLs fully displayed in Google Analytics, like where the traffic uh, is coming from, the full URL. So instead of getting a forward slash and not aware which homepage somebody visited, it would be uh, www that site uh, dot com you know and that now you know where somebody is in this case we have www main domain and you can see here that they went to the shop domain um, and there's a lot of advantages to this and setting this up in Google Analytics is really really beneficial to if you're if you're running into this issue and it's not retroactive so this only applies after you create this filter then you will see where the data comes in so if you set it on monday and you want to look at data from sunday saturday friday for domains it won't be there it'll only be um, going forward when you log into google analytics just go to the bottom admin panel uh, when it pops up you want to go to the far right and there's an area called filters here when you click on filters you'll get this window and you'll more likely have no filters you can add a new filter I'm not going to go through the uh, what every one of these means, but I'm just going to show you how to set it up 
quickly so you, it's effective for you. Once you, the filter pane opens up, call it, give it a name. I call it sub because I use this for subdomains, but you could call it whatever, uh, say, uh, business separation, whatever makes sense there. By filter type, we're going to go to custom, and then we're going to go to advanced. And in field A, we're going to uh, choose host name. Open parentheses, period, asterisk, close parentheses. Then field B will be request URL, open parentheses, period, asterisk, close parentheses. You put those in, and if you use Excel, you know exactly what we're doing here. Um, now, when that's closed, move down, scroll down, and you'll see the request URL, dollar sign A, uh, one, dollar sign B, one. Again, makes sense if you use Excel or Sheets. Make sure that the field A is required and that the uh, override output for field uh, is checked off. Once you have that checked off, you will be able to see in your page views, event views, anything that has a URL string to it in Google Analytics, the full URL, not just the abbreviated URL. This is absolutely critical. And, and, and if you're running into this issue, I'm sure you're going to run into an area where you're going to need to separate your um, uh, analytics uh, uh, domain accounts. Now, it's not perfect, right? The MCC individual accounts, individual analytics account is the best way to do it, but this will work. I, I really hope this added some value, added some clarity, uh, confirmed that you're 100% right. Um, if you found this helpful, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe below. I send out a Sunday recap again of all the questions that I answer marketing related. And as always, good luck uh, and happy marketing.